boom! Welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about why strength training is the best form of exercise if you want to slow the aging process, and who doesn't want to do that? Also, later in the episode, we talk about creatine. It's one of our favorite supplements, has a lot of great benefits, but we learned about just one more. In the second half of the episode, we coach four live callers on questions such as, how can I build muscle and lose fat at the same time? What is the best way to lift weights as a boxer? Finally, are there days that you're short on time and need a quick mind pump fix? Well, we have the answer for you. It's called Mind Pump Clips. Short clips taken from the show that you can easily consume and share. Go over to our other channel, Mind Pump Clips, and subscribe. All right, enjoy the show. It's becoming clear that the best form of exercise to directly combat the aging process and all of the potential dangers that come from aging is strength training. It's better than all other forms of exercise as you get older. Here's your fitness tip. Follow and listen to Mind Pump. I know. Hey. You know, you know why? Okay, you so, love when these studies just keep coming out, don't you? So, keep them so, coming. So I, first I want to be clear, okay? All forms of exercise, all forms of activity, activity so long as they're done uh, appropriately or applied appropriately, will benefit you as you get older. So I love I'm the not Freud saying and slip. Yeah, I know. I'm also, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's just. Gonna I know that. he did say anything. I thought he was so going to say something. I know, usually um, I do. It, they all improve your health. They'll all make the aging process feel better. They're all going to help fight and combat um, some of the things that happen along the aging process. That being said, if you compare them head to head, it's it's becoming very very clear that the most protective form of exercise. Uh, for the aging process is strength training. And uh, Dr. Andy Galpin just posted some some studies and data to show that. So that the fast twitch muscle fiber loss that happens as you get older. So these are the muscle fibers that are responsible for strength. As you get older, you get you start to notice more sarcopenia, right? The loss of muscle. And it's these fast twitch muscle fibers that really decline. Cardiovascular exercise doesn't prevent that. So they showed that people, as they get older, doing lots of cardio... And, and, you know, again, cardio has some health benefits. It's good for the heart and it's it's active, which is better than not being active. Mm -hmm. It didn't do much to anything to combat muscle and strength loss. <clears throat> and that's a big deal because as you get older, if you look at the the issues that plague people as they get older, you really can look at them in, in, in one short category. It's like insulin resistance, cognitive decline, loss of mobility, and then the, the the challenges that come with loss of mobility, which is falls. People fall down, yeah. they break a bone, hurt themselves, and then things tend to decline very quickly from there. Strength training is an, an incredible remedy for all those things. For insulin resistance, it's phenomenal because muscle is very insulin sensitive. Mm -hmm. For cognitive decline, when it comes to cog improvements in cognitive performance, strength training outperforms other forms of exercise, and data's showing this. And then mobility. People fall as they get older because they get weaker. This is why people fall. It's weakness. It's not necessarily just you lose your balance. That can happen as well from your equilibrium and your you know issues with the inner ear. But yeah, most of it's weakness. I know it has protective qualities too for your vital organs and whatnot. But uh, also, doesn't it have like an immune boosting effect as well in, in comparison to to cardiovascular training? All of it boosts your immune system, but uh, strength training is uh, very anti cancer in comparison. It's actually the most anti cancer form of exercise and uh, you know the number one risk factor for cancer is age. Yeah. As you get older, I think one third of us will have can will die from cancer. Well, it must be I mean I guess correlated somewhat to if, if you're not able to move, right? And like you don't have the strength to get up out of your chair, like you, you start this rapid decline in health uh, and we see this with with older people all the time oh. and so that's why I I think as we get we age more it's even uh, a higher uh, priority for people to really yeah, consider. I, I think that's really the takeaway too. I think sometimes we get labeled as the, these anti-cardio guys, no. which it's not the case at all. But they're the do the most bang for your buck guys. That's right. They're they're one hundred percent is a a better one than the other, and it's Bang and it, we continue to see this that strength training is better than cardio in, in almost all aspects, other than maybe endurance, the, yeah, you know, and yeah. stamina. Yeah. I mean, that other than that, like what most people come to the gym for, uh, strength training is the best bet. And so, if you are going to prioritize an exercise regime, I am going to. 
pick strength training as the foundation. And then, yeah, that would be great if you went and did, you know, 20 minutes of cardio every day or, you know, went for a nice long run occasionally. I yes, think there's lots of, movement. I love that. But to me, that's like the icing on the cake. You build everything. Your, your non-negotiable is I'm going to strength train. And then, hey, if I got some time to go out for the hike and go for a run and do these things, then heck yes, I want to see you do that. Yes. But don't, what I don't want to see is what, what I saw, I feel like in the, in the 90s and for sure 80s, I don't remember that in my 80s. I was so young, but I know that it was popular all the way from the 70s. Is this the best form of exercise is running? Actually, it was the only form. Right. Almost nothing else was recommended. And strength training was definitely not recommended. So here's the deal. We have to work with reality. So in a, in a perfect world, uh, if I could have people exercise as they get older, what would their routine look like? Well, it would have a foundation of strength training. There'd be a cardiovascular component. There'd be a mobility component. There'd be some meditation or spiritual practices. Their diet would look perfect. Like they'd have good relationships with people around them. I can make this list that's almost completely endless. But the reality is when it comes to exercise specifically, that's our expertise, right? When it comes to exercise, people will do one. They're not going to do two, three, four different forms of exercise. They'll do one um, in terms of consistency. And if that's you, which is most people, especially as you get older, pick the one that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Two hours of strength training will protect you against the effects of aging more than two hours of any other form of exercise by far, yeah. by far. Now, other forms of exercise also have protective benefits. So two hours of anything done appropriately is better than two hours of nothing. But if you're going to pick something, and so my 100% my opinion is in the next 10 years, the medical establishment is going to make strength training the primary form of exercise they recommend to people as they get older. That's what I think. I think they're going to literally come out and say- It looks that way. It totally I mean, looks- All and, these studies coming out. And we know this, that a simple grip test, which it's not the grip that's important. It's just a, a proxy for overall body strength. But a simple grip test will predict all-cause mortality better than almost any other single metric, mm -hmm. which is crazy. You can do blood markers. You can do all kinds of stuff. Just your grip strength. If it's really bad, they could predict your your all-cause mortality better, mm -hmm. which to me is, is pretty insane. So it's like- Yeah. And I'll tell you- uh, when I train clients, one of the reasons why I love training people in advanced age was the effects were so much more profound in them than in my younger populations. It was life-changing profound. It was like, um, I'm dependent on people helping me to I'm independent. It was, I can't go up my stairs without you know my chair that pulls me up there to I can walk up the stairs now, or I don't have to move out of my house, or I don't need a full-time nurse or... You know, uh, my blood sugar is so much more controlled. I went off my medication. Mm -hmm. I saw profound health effects with one to two days a week of strength training. That's it. That's all I did with, with, with people in this age group. Here's the prize for today's context, MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder style split routine. You can win it, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment and choose it, we will notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to MAPS Split. Now, we also have a sale going on this month. MAPS OCR, 50% off. And MAPS Cardio, 50% off. Both 50% off only for the month of November. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below for that hookup. All right, here comes the show. Did you guys see who's out of prison? Totally uh, left turn for you guys. Okay. Like, so, uh, did so you see? Famous? No. Uh, well, I yeah. Infamous, probably, oh, right? Infamous. What? So, uh, uh, Billy McFarlane, you remember who that is? Wait, he went to prison? Yeah, big time. Wait, He's, was he the guy that did the, 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 he did the music with the, the Fire Festival? Oh, that oh, guy. Yes. That guy. Pull, pull, pull him up, Billy. Doug. Okay, pull him up. And he's Damn, all, I, I was thinking of that one guy. Boop, 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 boop. What's that guy's name? Oh, his last Bobby name, McFarlane? Mc, McFarlane. Yeah. I was like, why was he in jail? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, that guy. I just got out of jail. No, this is the guy, this is the guy who did the whole fire festival scam. And the crazy, I think he's not even out for a day or two and is already posting on social media and is talking about some massive event. <laughs> he probably was planning some other yes, new festival. Like, I bet you, prison. Okay, so that, I, I've got something in the works. Oh, look my, at Oh my God. Look at. He's got something in the works. He's going to announce in November. He's already he's already alluding to it's another. <laughs> he already has investors, that bro. <laughs> lined up hey. and okay, so I totally think wow. what you just said, Justin, is exactly what happened. I think he went back over and looked at where he went wrong, and yeah. like, okay, how could I have protected? My, how could I have done exactly the same thing and made all that money and not got 
sued and, and screwed helped. everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I don't think he cares if he, he screws people or really? not. I think he just cares. No. If he get, I just think he, he gets just, cares if he gets uh, held accountable for screwing people. So I right. bet you he, you're he right. He that he got caught. Yeah. I bet he sat well, hey, down. Man, and, kudos to him for trying again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, shame on anybody investing yes, in his ideas. But, yeah, yeah, yes. That's so. I can't wait to see who puts money behind this. How crazy! If you put money behind this, though, you would have to think that the investors this time would be like, "I want complete transparency. I want to know what's happening and where, and what's going on. And I want, I want to be able to bail halfway through if something like you. You have to imagine that's what investors would ask for. And he's going to say. Let me prove it to you that this time yeah. it's going to be good. Because I mean, I imagine the way it goes. He has name recognition. Wasn't he partnered with Ja Rule? That was like one of his main <laughs> yeah, guys. Was, yeah. Ja Rule. Yeah. <laughs> Is he still around? Is he alive? No. Uh, but you see the thing. Do you follow? I follow 50 Cent for <laughs> randomly, right? So do. I do. Oh, and mainly because he posts like wacky shit all the time. And Didn't he change his, his name? because One of his favorite things is just that he throws jabs at Ja. They've had beef forever. Really? And, yeah. So he like throws like. 50 Cent would. Beat their shit. Like, yeah. po- like la- I think last year, I think it was last year or the year before when Jaw was doing like this like tour again and he like showed this picture of like a stadium and there's like one person sitting in he's like Jaw Roll concert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, he just throws like fucking, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just jabs Hey, can we have names like that? Like, I don't want to be Sal anymore or Justin and Adam. We need some names. Like a ja you can't come up, yeah. somebody has to like come up with it for you. Yeah. That's, that's the rules. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I want, I want something call like that. Ja. You know yeah. what I mean? Yo, yeah. uh, speaking of like crazy stuff like that too, is did you guys also see, so I think it was just a couple days ago, I know this will air off on a few days, so it'll probably be la- last week. Uh, Alec Baldwin posted the picture. Oh my god! Talk about fail, dude. What, of what? What, what is the he girl thinking? He, the girl he killed. Yeah, the, he posted uh, a picture on the of day her? of. Yeah, like, so it, it was, was a, it was a year. Yes. from the date. Like like oh when like, he when he shot her. So the one like year he felt anniversary feels bad or whatever. Yeah, like yeah, thing. but the caption was just like maybe Doug could find the caption. Alec Baldwin posts. But who? But here's the thing, like that is such a tragedy. Like to for him, it just seems so like I don't know what the word is. Like not callous, but like it's just one of those. It's self-serving, like narcissistic, he, narcissistic. Sure. Yeah. yeah, the fact that you w- would even post that on there. I, th- I mean, okay, great. If you're really sorry, then then uh, maybe a personal letter to the family. No, does it to yeah. the public? Yeah, like who a, posted a, a on massive Instagram? donation, like you know, to something. Yeah, uh, I oh, mean, is that it right there? It, it to yes. her family. Wait, what's the caption say? One year ago today. That's it. That's it. That's all it says. With a picture of the girl he shot. Uh, that's weird. That's yeah. fucking way weird. That's weird. Damn. What an idiot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, <laughs> commentary. You know, I feel, like come I, on, like, I mean, that's, that's like bro, that, that's, that is a pretty listen, stupid, you're move. pretty uh, like not self aware. I feel, you know what though? Here's the deal. I feel like if you meet celebrities like this in person, I think they're all gonna like the universe revolves around them. I think all, all yeah. of them are like that. It's got to yeah. be the weirdest experience. Well, I mean, I don't think all, but I think that I mean, obviously I that's think an, there's some that's normal over, one. That's like, an overgeneralization. Maybe one percent. Oh shit. <laughs> My bad. My bad. That's an overgeneralization for just starting hot. God, I was not going to go there, Adam. Yeah. You pull us in every time. Yeah. You know, can I say, can I make a comment on Kanye? Is that okay, Doug? Can I do that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, look, here's the deal. I want to say this. just edit it out. I, I, I want to say this real quick here. about Kanye. Don't you dare. We haven't edited in seven years. Why no, start now? I'm going to accept that one time, remember? <laughs> yeah. I um. Here's the deal. I, okay. <clears throat> here's what really annoys us. So, I try to, when shit like this happens, I try to took a, a take a bigger look, like a forty thousand foot view, because number one, I don't know Kanye. I really don't care about Kanye. Um, yeah, I don't know him personally. It really has no effect on me. So when stuff like this happens, what I do is I try to pause and I try to take a bigger like view. Okay, like what's going on here? And you know what's annoying to me is the selective outrage that people have. Here's what I mean by that. He made some comments that were super generalized, you know, bigoted, right? The, uh, you know, the yeah, Jews, they were this, offensive for Jews sure. that, right. Yeah. And, and I get that. I get that. Like I I'm against, um, generalizing, uh, based off of immutable characteristics. Okay. But here's a selective outrage. You know how many people say white people, this, and well, how Christian is that any different this? than the systemic racism uh, argument that uh, you have all of these powerful white men in power that are uh, it's oppressing so many things? How is it's that any same. different? That's what I'm saying. But, but that, that, is, that is completely acceptable to talk about it's that. It's insane to me. And to not only talk about that, but to make that a, ma- a major talking point about what's wrong with this country. And so having him come out and say something like that, which again, I'm with you. I don't agree with it. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. right. But at the same time too, how, how is everyone so pissed at that? But then, then, but we don't get pissed about that. Because it, people are mad at what they're told to be mad at. 
Yeah, it's ridiculous to me. Like it's, you it's can like say, be mad at both if you're going to you be, say, be, mad you know, at, be mad at all of it. Yeah, well, that's, that's, you know, or be, whatever. Be, be con- consistent is all. Thank you. Yeah. Like if you're against bigotry, then be against bigotry. If you're against generalizing based off of you know discriminating uh, based off of immutable characteristics, then be consistent. But this, so many of these same celebrities that are that are hammering Kanye have said so many times white Christian men or men or white people this, white people that. It's like, listen, it's all wrong. All that generalization is wrong and don't defend it. I hate it when people try to defend it. Well, the white, the, 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 like, shut up. That's bullshit. So I'm not agreeing with Kanye, but the, the outrage is all manufactured. Most people- I, well, I mean, shit. I also think it's stupid when we when we put all these celebrities on pedestals. So yeah, I, like he's, you know what he's I'm a at. genius at? Rapping. Music. That's it. Music. Rapping and all oh, making some cool- clothes i agree yeah i mean fashion fashion and rapping is what the guy's known for so wh- why would you take his 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 political point of views his economic point of view you know he's his obviously social point of views why would you totally. even give him that much weight in that area 100 percent. he's totally though he's he's definitely uh pushing he's getting into that manic space i don't know if you have you guys ever dealt with somebody who goes you're the closest manic person i know yeah so i i yeah. so thank you i uh <laughs> i don't get manic but i can definitely get hypomanic which is just under it so I don't go crazy, but I can get those states of like whatever. Mm. Anyway, I had a friend who would go uh, from depressed to manic, and in the Is manic, it all associated with uh, bipolar. Yes, or, okay, because yes. I've had yeah a few clients who are bipolar. Bro, I had a guy who worked for me as bipolar. So and I dated did you ever bi- watch him? And I dated a bipolar chick. I've told you the story about that. Oh before. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I definitely am. Did you ever see the manic that. state? Yeah. Like full mania? Well, I mean, I get, so I don't know how, how you're defining the difference between somebody who is bipolar versus someone who's manic. Oh, so I, manic is, is diff- so bipolar is the two extremes. Yep. So depressed. Yep. And, and then, then manic. Super, okay. So, and mania is hyper energy, crazy ideas. Uh, it can get to the point where you literally are crazy. Yeah. Like you're literally crazy. You're like I'm doing out anything. Yeah. Like I, you know, like I wrote on a napkin an yeah. invention for limitless energy and it's going to change the world. Like, Literally crazy. It could go real crazy, right? right? You could have hypomania, which I've had before, which is under that, where I just got lots of energy, lots of creative energy. I talk a lot, you know, I get excited, that kind of stuff, but I've never gone, at least I, to my knowledge, I should ask my <laughs> wife, have I ever been crazy? <laughs> but, uh, but he's obviously, and a lot of creative people get in this because that those when you start to go into mania, you get a lot of creativity, a lot of energy, and he's, obvi- it's, he's yeah. obviously getting into that state. You know right? what's funny it's to me, though, too, is that the, everybody who has such a problem with it is you're, you're only helping him by by g- posting crazy about it and making yeah. shit go it's so crazy like if it if you're so outraged like honestly the thing would be is stop buying any of his shit stop listening to his music take him out of your mouth don't talk about him move on from that guy you spreading it and what's happening right now with the banks pulling him out adidas just dropped him dude his and I know that the article, the headline was, "Oh, he's no longer a billionaire. Now he's only worth four hundred million because that Adidas deal was one point two billion. Okay, well, yeah. Watch when he launches his own freaking his own thing that's not connected to Adidas yeah. or Nike and see. Yeah, but I don't think they're. I don't think they're thinking to themselves. I don't think Adidas is like we want to cripple Kanye. I think they're thinking we need to distance ourselves. That, I think totally, all these people totally are only doing it to virtue signal. It is literally we want to look good and we need to, st- everyone is getting outraged at this guy. So we need to make of sure we, we stand on the right side of the fence here because we don't want to get blackballed. Yeah, yeah of course. Of 100%. Course. Yeah, they're that thinking is. about their pocketbooks like they always do, right? Like yeah. this, this may hurt sales, so let's get away. I yeah. get that. But it's the selective outrage part that's just, and I say selective because there's no consistency with a lot of people. It's like they're mad and then it happens yeah. over here and oh they're cool that's that's the, that's not the same it's the same so th- he lost his adidas contract which i guess then puts him out of the billionaire spot right like it dropped his yeah that's what i was saying to, oh that's yeah because it was where it, is it, it was, now you think well so 400 million is what they project now um hey, net worth stuff is so funny because yeah. I, I mean i i used when i was younger i used to think like that was my like oh, i want to get to a certain net worth but the way that people calculate that, I mean, we are off air. Remember, you know how many you know how many poor millionaires we have in San Jose, because they bought their houses uh, decades yeah. ago. They don't make a lot of money, and all their values in their house, they can't sell their house. They don't yeah, I mean, that's one way to talk about it. It's right. another way to talk about it where it's totally insane to me too. Is just the uh, like you'll take a if you have a business, right? You take the EBITDA and you multiply it by you know three or five x, some nine, ten x, depending on the type of business, and then that gets calculated into your net worth. But it's not like you can take any of that money and go and buy. It's a, not real money yet. Yeah, not yeah. yet. It's real. If you sell the company and yeah. then you you uh, get what they they claim it's worth three, five, whatever x, then okay, now now you technically have that. But 
uh, I mean, I now where I'm at in my I really, cash flow is more important to me. How much cash flow can I build? How much passive income can I build? Well, that's more like apl- applicable to real life. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's a, and it it's constantly coming in. It's not something that I'm on paper. I'm worth X amount of dollars. It's I've built this this machinery, yeah. right? Okay, so is there any moving conspiracy with this though? Because um, I actually heard that it was like somebody was talking about a way for him to get out of contracts. Uh, <laughs> so okay, that's the part. I mean, I'm obviously I'm not buying into these. I, I'm just curious what's out there right now. I love when people come around. Up with, yeah, like, like the obvious is not. Well, I real. like conspiracies like this because this is now in the stuff that I like to. Li- You're just as bad as we are, bro. Yeah. I hate it when you guys and you make yeah, fun you of just us. come from a different angle. Yeah. So these like, are these are the ones pop that culture I, angle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you're talking about uh, marketing and advertising and in business, like. You know the old saying of no pub is you know bad pub is not is bad pub is good pub and you know all, no all, pub is bad pub yeah no pub right so getting publicity good or bad is always good in the business of making money it's better than no so pub. Okay, yeah. part of me sometimes thinks when I see something like this come out and and then him double and triple down on something like that is he's no he's been in the marketing game for a long time now especially trying to promote yourself and the rap I mean talk about that's got to be like one of the hardest hustles is coming up from the street hustling your rap making it all the way so this guy knows how to hustle mm-hmm. so to, to just assume that he's this crazy guy who's bipolar who says off the wall shit shit with no strategy at all i don't know i don't, i i could get I, I, and i also don't say that doesn't mean i'm going like full-on i'm conspiracy mode but i you wouldn't it's calculated i wouldn't put it past Bro, someone to say I, some calculated you ever seen his twitter streams like his tweets and he's he goes off yeah. and here's the deal people like people who are a little crazy they do. We like them. And we, do you think someone like that who's come up from the bottom like that doesn't know that? Who had to hustle to get his I songs picked thinks, up? And like, do you, you, I think he thinks that he he's obviously got a high level of uh, narcissism. You have to in order right. to do that kind of stuff. And I think he thinks I'm gonna no matter what I'm gonna succeed and I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. And then if you push him, he's gonna push back because that's what he does. He pushes back harder. I don't necessarily think he's sitting there making this plan. And he's like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. What, you, what was that tweet? I'm gonna go DefCon three on the Jews. Like, I'm I think he this. sees what you saw, which is basically here's this. Okay, a, a major talking point in the last few years has been, or almost like five, I'd say, the systemic racism conversation has been a, a huge one, and yeah. everybody, no, very few people want to oppose it, and yeah. the and everybody wants to jump on it and say yes, yes, and agree with all of it. And then what he said when you when you unpack both of those is the same thing. They're they're both wrong. They're not fair. Yeah. But I think he knows that. It's the same thing that he just did with the the White Lives Matter shirt. You think that was just like a? You don't think he thought no, about that, what no, he was I, doing? No, that was more calculated. That was, I that think was, that was so that was so, calculated, yeah. and it goes against the the normal narrative. So does what he's doing right now goes against the normal narrative. And well, no, that's not just against the narrative. That's just, that's just he just made statements I mean, that were not. I mean, they were just they were. Obviously, he, yeah, he generalized discriminatory. Yeah, yeah, that yeah but you can make that case for the the white lives matter thing. No, no, that's no, no, a, no. that's a, like right in your face. No, no, after- no, 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 that's not the same thing. So wearing a white lives matter is. Opposing- I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I mean, as far as it being in the face of, of basically, well, what, I guess from that what's accepted in the 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 mainstream. Right yeah, now. I guess from that standpoint, but he put his foot in his mouth. This one's this one. He's not going to get supported by yeah. any anybody on the on the political spectrum. Um, or less not publicly because it's uh, it just doesn't sound good. It's not right how we said it. Um, but look, Kanye makes money off of being Kanye. Is this going to crush him? I don't. I don't know. I doubt it. I wouldn't bet against him. No, of course not. I think he's going to. He's 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 figured out how to make money doing crazy shit for a long time. But for me, again, the big picture is a selective outrage. People are so mad. It's this, these same people will say the same exact types of statements but just insert white people in there and somehow that's okay. And in fact, I've heard people debate and, and why that's okay, why that's justified. It's like, right. no, dude, that's the same freaking thing. Yeah. So it's insane to me. I anyway, mean, that's what I think we all uh, all agree on yeah. that. And I I personally I think that right or wrong, that's his way of trying to get that conversation going. And I I do think that he thinks he's so brilliant that this is a clever way to do it. Um, uh, and again, I don't support what he says, but I, I think to just, oh, he's, he's crazy and manic and he just says off the wall shit. I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know. I think Here, this guy, this want- guy, this guy's uh, it, like one of the things he's good with is his words. So 
to to think that before he goes into an interview where he's he knows probably what his PR knows what he's going to get asked and talked about that he didn't sit down and think about oh, what, oh. what 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 areas is he going to intentionally push? Oh, I think he thought about it. I just don't think he thought about it like a logical person would. I think he thought about it in Kanye think. Yeah, you know, which is but it also well, like we none of us know the guy and whatever. Yeah, it's it's just it's funny. It didn't come out right. Is yeah, what, it's, it's the yeah. late it's the latest thing. So that's whatever. And he what he said was wrong. So yeah. Big deal, but yeah. uh, everybody that's pissed off about it, like, are you still mad when other people do the same thing with other people? That's the that's the part that I so challenge. speaking but, of being mad, I want to know if you guys would be mad about this. Mississippi teacher uh, is I I don't know what it, it I know she's getting sued for doing this, but did you guys see this? It was I uh, go to New York Post Mississippi teacher scares. Oh, uh, I saw the video of that. Talk about wanting to piss me off and and like get me out of my seat. <laughs> what, <laughs> like, dude, these. These people are psycho. These teachers like put on a, a scream mask and scare the shit out of these toddlers. Like the Whoa, what? Like like deliberately. Yes. Like just like yeah. And, and made you the kids see the cry. Video. So yeah. they they tried to make. Oh, they were like terrified. No, no, no. They were like yeah, exactly. Like, Why? Because she tried to claim that I don't she know. was trying to motivate them to like clean up or pick up. Their That's toys. a terrible way. <laughs> I know, I know, well, dude. now they're facing felony charges. Look at, right. Look at. Children screaming in terror at a daycare center as a grown up wearing a scary mask yells in their faces. Oh no. No, 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 no. That's not no, cool. I know. It's, it's hard to watch. I don't. No, that's not cool. Can you believe to that? To motivate them to clean? Yeah, that, I mean, that was the defense, right? I, I don't know how, uh, obviously, I doubt that held up very well. Like people, It's were like, like, I'm going to go in there with an unloaded gun. Yeah. And be like, hey, you better yeah. do what I say. And that yeah. was just, unloaded. Just, I just, want to just, just kidding. Yeah, it's not real. It was a joke. Uh -huh. Wow, that's terrible. What's wrong right? with people? Yeah. So she's get, they're obviously going to get in trouble for this. Well, they're getting right. sued by the parents. I don't know what the, the school If I saw is, that. I, I saw that they're, they may be facing felony charges for this. Wow. I can't read what it's saying. Are you? Can you see it, Doug? Uh, and like they're laughing. Could you imagine? You better be good. Yeah, and they're, they're laughing. The teachers are laughing about it. Wow. That's, <clears throat> oh my God. If I saw that and that was my kid. I oh. know. That's, oh. that's that's where that like kind of comes out. Like I mean, know, I, the, that's why I brought it up bear. to you guys because I, I, Katrina oh, told me and then I looked it up no. and then I, I felt the same way too. I'm just like, dude, dude have you guys stoop? I, you know, it's funny. This is what happens when you let like, teachers who don't have kids fucking teach. Yeah. That's what that is right there. Some, some teacher who doesn't have kids oh, who doesn't realize how much uh, it's going to traumatize their kids. Someone needs to scare the yeah, shit out of that teacher. Traumatizing. Have you guys, okay, so I don't know if you've done this yet, Adam, because you, your, your boy's still kind of young, but maybe Justin, have you ever done something where you didn't, really think it out with your boys. Oh, and you push the limit a little bit. And it bit. just terrified them. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this was roller coasters, right? And and I'm like, I'm one to kind of push and nudge to, to, to go for it. And like, let's, you know, worry about the ramifications of it later, right? Like, let's just like, let's see what what you're capable of handling. And so uh, Everett was probably like, I want to say four or five, oh. whatever the, the lowest age possible that you can go on uh, Space Mountain. And um, of course, ironically, that that time it was near Halloween. So it had this whole new setup. So it was like this projected ghost that was the most terrifying like <laughs> ghost that could possibly have like flying after you and going like, Rah! and like they turned all the lights off extra. So it was like really dark. And b even before I got in on there, I asked the person that was working, I'm like, is this going to be appropriate? Is he going to be okay? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's going to be fine. Yeah. So it, he, he was like, like shaking, you gripping my hand, like the hearts I've ever felt him grip my hand. And then we get off and he was just like, had his head down and he was like shaking. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. God. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> Dude, it took, it's taken me like, like, <laughs> like, you know, the little, um, the little <laughs> ride where you just like go around in a circle. With, you like, traumatized him. <laughs> yeah. I had to start with that all over again. It's like, I had to start there and then just slowly build back up to the big dipper. That's the worst. <laughs> hey, it's the worst. He's like feeling. 17 and he's just now. <laughs> Not peeing himself when it goes dark. Oh, bro, bro, dude, I felt so terrible. It's oh, the worst shit. feeling. I did that to my son. I don't remember how old he was, seven, and there was this anime that came out, and I'm like, oh, this will be kind of cool. And there's this fucking scary, like, scene where these, like, big giants, like, eat people and bite them in half, which I didn't anticipate. <laughs> and my son was watching, and it was cool up until that point because they're doing, like, kung fu and shit. And then that comes out, and he buries his head. He just buries his head into my armpit. Yeah. And I immediately was like, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> I yeah. turned it off. Yeah. And he would not watch 
anything like that for years. Oh, I bet. Until this day, he's like, yeah, remember the time you made that <laughs> terrible still, decision? Yeah, he still <laughs> remember when he did that to me? Oh. Like, I, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if I do I, Katrina, is, she's quick to get to me. I'm always, I'm like Justin, I'm always trying to push the limits a little bit and she's always like, don't you do that with him, man. I'm like, okay, relax. So, it's, you know what? It's always dads sure. because there's like a movie or something we can't wait to share with our kids. Oh, yeah. And we end up making, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're old enough to watch Violence, this. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. yeah like, it's long, have so you seen crazy sexual has, stuff? Do you remember showing your kids Gremlins for the first time? Gremlins is terrifying. Yeah, yet. no, I was scared as a kid. Bro, wow. you know, that you know, was terrifying. So you know what I'm having a hard time with right now is that, so Max is like infatuated with Halloween. Zombies and skeletons and yeah. like he just, and so when he gets home from school Ooh. right now, he won't, he doesn't want to go in the house. He wants to go walk the neighborhood and go walk to like all the scariest houses. And so he loves this wow, stuff. That's cool. I was like that. That's oh, great. he wants, and that's all he wants to watch. So if he's watching his iPad, he wants to watch all the Halloween special stuff. So. Super new, but then we're having nightmares, dude. So it's like, oh yeah. yeah so he's, yeah. Uh, you know, and you can't communicate. That, they're that so phase. young that you can't communicate to them. Like, son, maybe we should stop looking at okay. zombies and all mm -hmm. this. So you know what stuff. it is? I was mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I was like that for a long time. He likes the thrill, mm -hmm. so he pushes them. I was the same way. I would watch movies that were scary, and I loved dude. them because they were scary. And then I couldn't sleep, and I'd have nightmares. Yeah. But it didn't stop me. So I was the same way. Yeah, he likes we, the thrill of it. We had the and so we tried to have them watch it like in the middle of the day, thinking that like yeah maybe we could just show it to them then and then it's they're not gonna still remember it. Nice, huh. still nightmares. Yeah. We went through a whole phase of like night terrors. Dude, like, I had it was bad. I my little cousin. This one was the worst. I'll never forget. He was I don't remember how old he was. He was a little kid, maybe seven or something. Mm -hmm. And do you guys remember that that internet video that went on a long time ago where? You're looking, uh, you have to go through this maze with the cursor. And then if you touch the walls, a scary ass face pops up and it screams hell out. Do you guys remember this? No. It was like a prank. No. Yeah. So you send it to your friends and yes. you go, hey, try this maze. And they try and everybody fails. And then it goes, ah! Yeah, it's like it's almost that snake game. Or yeah. Uh, yeah. And then people, I so, that. so I did this with him on my lap, not knowing what would happen. <laughs> you know, and I knew it was going to be scary, but I didn't know it was going to be that scary. Well, anyway, when the monster came out and screamed, mm -hmm. he, he, he's, <gasps> he did that for like, like 30 seconds. And I, I, I felt so bad, dude. I held them and I'm like, wow, <laughs> dude. what have I done? <laughs> that one got a lot of people. It did. Uh, it did. That was a great <laughs> prank. Anyway, I got a hack for you guys, uh, a that? food hack. I'm not a big, you know, you guys, I'm, I'm not like Doug or whatever. I don't make great stuff. But um, I did figure this out. You guys want So I like using ground beef. It's, it's convenient. It's easy. Great source of protein. If it's grass fed, nice fatty acid profile. So like ButcherBox has the grass fed ground beef. Mm -hmm. I mix, so I'll take a pound of ground beef and I'll mix a quarter pound of pork sausage, the ground pork sausage with it. So I'll make uh, beef patties, hmm. but the sausage adds like the best flavor. Makes it so good. Wow, mixing sausage in in ground meat, huh? Yeah, so, so it's ground sausage. It's so we ground do sausage. that in the so the dish that everybody asks about that I I post and I I don't think I've posted the recipe so because Katrina makes it. That uh, quinoa pasta dish that looks like lasagna. Oh. That's how we, we would do ground beef, and then she does a little bit of the the sausage in there to, to give it that flavor, and it's bomb. It mm. makes a it, like try it. it's a nice combination with the beef and the sausage. It gives it such a good. So well, especially the the butcher block beef because it's so lean. It's so yeah. it, it's yeah. so lean, and so that sausage gives that kind of the yeah. the, the juicy the fatty kick. side of it. Yeah. Dude, yeah. speaking of food, man, I I was so yesterday I go over to um, Luna, but the one in the prune yard. So they have one over here, the one that we always go to. Yeah. Then there's one in the prune yard, the big one. And the owner was there. I haven't seen her in a while, so we're talking. And, uh, you know, we're having a good conversation. And Jessica's like, you know, which location are you at more and whatever? She's like, oh, I spend more of my time here. She goes, you know, I have 160 employees to manage. I'm like, what? How many employees do you have at this restaurant? 160. Wait, just at the location? In or the prune is it yard. Both. At the prune yard. Wow. And That's a lot. Bro, and, it, and I have an, so I have an uncle. My, so my grandfather's brother, uh, my grandfather just passed away. His brother has a restaurant in Folsom. Mm. Uh, called Visconti's Restaurant. It's been there forever. And I, so I'm somewhat familiar with the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. But when I heard that number, like if you're not passionate, like really passionate about owning a restaurant, that's got like you, no way you could do it. feed right there. There's no way. Yeah. That's got to be the worst business. Oh yeah. That's got to no, be so it's, hard. It's, it's a brutal business. I mean, it, when I, it, I basically made like minimum wage and then like tips and all that. But I mean, still like to be able to manage everybody's schedules and like have 
you know, to consider like all those employees, that's a lot of, uh, and the margins are not, the huge, margins are and slim the prep before you, you open. gotta continuously have inventory, like way thought out. Otherwise you, you, you're short. Yeah. And then especially on the busy nights, you get totally screwed. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. When she man. said that, I'm like, Oh my God, I've never, I've managed, you know, 60 employees, 160. Holy shit. I sure wish we get some free guacamole though with all that <laughs> fucking free advertising and stuff. They no, get no, no. The eat there every single day. Or I mean, we eat there every single day, dude. Yeah. Every single day. Talk all the time about it. We bring hey, people in there all the time. Delicious. Can't get some fucking guacamole maybe for free every once in a while. <laughs> that is such a Jesus, dude. It's this is bad business, in my opinion. No. I feel like if, if no, someone, it's obviously good business. We keep going. There. The <laughs> yeah, food's you know, good. We keep food. recommending it. Good. It's amazing. It's, right a, now. it's amazing yeah. food, but I just, I just, ah, that stuff when people don't do that, I just, just I, recognize me. That's what I want. No, it's not. No, 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 no. Don't get that twisted. This was way before. If no, my, no, I mean, my book not it's like just like what you would do as a business owner. Yes, like it's different. One of my favorite. So I, I used to go to this coffee shop for years. Okay. Uh, long, long ago. And, um, you know, every single morning I, I ate there and I got a big meal and stuff like that. And, you know, they, what they would do just not asking nothing, just every once in a while would be like, I don't know, every seventh or eighth meal there, they would, you know, give me like a, a pie for dessert for free or, Hey, today's on us. Don't worry about it. Like they would yeah, do yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, and you know, that did it locked me in. It means yeah. I would even, and then I'd spend that, more. And, that's and, old school. You know, my, my uncle's like that. So if you go to, if I don't know if he still does it, but I know his sons and, um, grandchildren and you know nieces all run it when you go there one of the reasons why he's been named uh, that restaurant's been named as the best italian food in Folsom for so many years is that he walks around at night he walks around has wine with people sits down with people at the there's table. an italian restaurant here called um starts with an f have you been to it it's oh. it's like that the owner comes around and katrina's mom knows him really well and like every night he's in there and he walks over and talks to all the fratellos is it fratellos uh, maybe i yeah. think it might yeah, be fratellos that's the old school way, you know, when you when you own a restaurant. It makes a big difference. Why is that the old school way? That should be the way. It's just like good business, I feel yeah. like. I mean, that's just just Because a, the old school way is oh, there's my there's there's his restaurant. That's my uncle's restaurant. Oh, they have a like a commercial? Or is that the that's website? That's their website. That's my cousin. That's, a good that's so funny. So that's my cousin Frank. You know what's funny about that guy? So nice. I I worked with my dad as a kid. And Frank worked for my dad. Frank was his helper. Bro, that's a really good a website, you know that? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, they're great. The food is legit, bro. You want real, like legit. Italian Sicilian food. So there. okay, so that obviously they have a, a very successful restaurant. Do they do very well, like financially? Yeah, yeah they do. It supports the whole family. The whole oh, family awesome. works there. It's all family owned and operated. But yeah, my cousin Frank, I remember. So he was like a, he was the guy. He's gonna. I don't know if he'll get mad at me saying this. He was like the stereotypical Guido, right? <laughs> so like goatee, Iroxy. He had yeah. the Iroxy. He always yeah. had the. He always had the fast. You know, whatever. Yeah. Dated, you know, girls. He would wear the gold oh, chains. Yeah. And, you know, he'd make those jokes and kind of whatever. And so I was young. I was probably like, I was like 14 or 13 and I'd show up to help. And he was my dad's helper. And he had to be in his late teens, early 20s. So, to, you know, to me, he was like the coolest guy in the world. And it was just funny, the story. I mean, the dirty jokes that guy used to tell me. <laughs> Frank, they were very inappropriate for a young kid to hear. <laughs> I'm going to see him soon for this the, the best for the funeral. That was, I think, mine. one of the coolest parts. If you were a kid, then you worked in construction or like a they job treated like a, like an yeah. Like, yeah. Like a man. I, I that was one of the things I used to like about working like that. You got to hear all the dirty. You want to know one of the one of the skills you learned working con, working in construction? This is a skill that how to, how to heat a burrito up on the dash. No, but uh, that's also a skill. Dashboard burritos, bro. I lived yeah. by that for a while. No, here's a skill right here. Jessica's always like. You don't. You can go to the bathroom anywhere, a porta potty, restaurant, bar. You're not like grossed out. I'm like, honey, I used to go construction with my dad. Yeah, like you have Disgusting. to figure it out yeah. when you go to these places yeah. and there's a porta potty shared by 30 construction guys, and that's yeah, yeah. or a it's hole or whatever. Or you're wiping your butt with the the sawdust covered toilet paper all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because 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 it blows all over the place. It's like, <laughs> God, oh damn God. It. God damn it! God damn it! my ass with this. Uh, it I don't it. know how many times that happened to me as a kid. Can we not? Can we, I feel like so. They, yeah. they, they, that's an invention waiting to happen for construction sites. Someone to have like <laughs> no a, sauce, a, wet yeah, wipe no dispenser. Sauce. It's, it's yeah. a commercial waiting to happen. Yeah, I swear. Dude, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> good time. Anyway, all right. I got I got conspiracy oh. theory for you, uh, oh, okay. Adam. Oh, I, I get one. one. All right, Wait, what? okay. A good one. You for me? Yo, you'll. It's for Adam because Adam, you will love it. For okay, it, you'll. Okay. Well, not, you might not like, like it. You'll be pissed off about it. But Adam, uh, great. Here's the stuff that goes. He's gonna come and tell us why uh, it's not a conspiracy. Or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the latest infrastructure bill, this is what they do with these big bills, right? They pass these huge bills, 
And they're like, it's to whatever, fight climate change or to help, you know, poor kids or something, right? That they yeah. that sounds like everybody's Save supportive. The and they're mm -hmm. huge bills. And they say, we have to pass this. We have to pass this. We have five days and nobody reads it because it's so big. Yeah, yeah. And what they do is they wedge months, in. Months later, we all start reading what we signed yes, up for. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what do we sign up for? In up? the infrastructure bill. Which is, is just a recent one. Yes. Okay. In there is a government kill switch for all vehicles. So new vehicles, it'll be implemented in like five years or so. So all new vehicles in about five years or so that'll be built will be required to implement a kill switch in the vehicle, meaning the government can hit a button and turn and that's it. You, your car won't I work anymore. I do believe we were concerned about this. We were. About the electric cars and that's right. Oh, we, they would never do that. Yeah. Right? Wow. Remember saying that, Adam? Yeah, I, I do. Remember saying that. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while, I'm wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> every once in a while. Every once in a while. Very, podcast. very rare. Okay. But God damn, that's crazy. I'll tell you what, though. Yeah. Gas powered all day. Yeah, that's right. My cars, I'm going to let them just sit in there and yeah. go up in value, bro. That's for sure. You better believe there's going to be people that will not want that shit. That's crazy to me. Yeah. And, it, you and know, the way they're selling it is like, of course, power. if you had a, if you're a, a cop chase, that's and, right. If yeah. you're a cop chase and this snack, because I could totally see a bunch of robbers having a new Prius or a new freaking yeah. uh, whatever. They're not going to have like some old gas car. Like you, you really think yeah. they're going to be running around in electric vehicles? No. Well, you guys want to bring up, cons you know, like controversial stuff. Like look at what we just got in terms of a uh, reversal uh, recently <gasps> in New York. Oh, I saw. Uh, they have to reinstate. All the employees okay, get fired. So, okay, so how does that? How do you really truly implement something like that? Like the back question. pay, the back yeah, pay. the back pay. Was it like forty thousand? They, they have to pay them the money that they could have made, and they have to reinstate them because they took it to court, fought it. And this won. was a, this is a big deal. Yeah, like, very big deal. Yes, so. I, I mean, I can, I I love it. I know. So do I. I, I, mean, I think it's. Why don't you describe what it is? So. Oh. What do you mean? Well, the audience doesn't know what so, you're talking about. Oh no! It was they. They, they were fired because they. they why chose were they fired for not getting, for vaccinated. Not getting vaccinated? Sorry, vaccinated. Doug. Yeah. So it was the mandate to get vaccinated. Thank if you don't you, get Doug. vaccinated, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. If you don't get vaccinated, yeah. you're fired. And they took them to court and they won, and so they got reinstated. Plus, they have to get paid back pay. So, and I think you're going to see more of this stuff. I really do. Dude, that I mean, Kate. Okay. From the business perspective, how fucked are you from something like that? Because you've moved on, you've hired someone else, you're paying somebody else now yeah. for that those positions, or you or found a way to that. The government's fuck because uh, private companies who are mandated by their government to do it, if they get sued, they could pass okay, the so buck. That's, that's, say, I was, okay, that's what I'm, yeah, I was where I'm getting at. Then. So say a massive company did that. I, maybe we can look this up. What was the biggest COVID layoff? Like who, what company laid off the most people for not getting vaccinated? One, I'd the, like to the see The biggest that. Were, were government entities. Okay. So it was, it was like the so military. Like, okay, well, so that's the like thing. Law, so say law enforcement, in? right? Yeah. So like law enforcement or something like that or whatever. So then does that, do they turn around and then, and then sue the government? Be, okay. So they're going to, they're going to come because if, if they, the, va the vast majority of them are government, uh, um, you know, whatever, not companies, but government entities. So the vast majority of people who got fired Work for the government. So then what ends up happening? Does that mean that they get sued? Okay, they win the court case, and then the government just peddles that money through the- Correct. And by the way, so, the mean, government that, Which just means we all get fucked. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> no, the government the doesn't point. have money. We have money. They take it from us. Uh, I mean, so, it's, it's a principle That's what thing, I'm trying though. to get at here. I mean, so I, I, mean, I guess I'm for it, but not really, because it's eventually going to screw all of us again. Right, so we we print a bunch of crazy money that fucks us. Then we fire these people for for not being that fucks us. That yeah, fucks but, us. But, to then we turn around admit and admit that it was wrong is everything to me. Yeah, that's that's where I find it a big deal. Is like you know it, it went yeah, against constitution. Like this, everybody knew that they were just bypassing that because of some emergency uh, authorization, and you know just completely uh, disregarded our rights. I wonder how many how many. Uh, private companies did that. I did have a, a friend of mine who worked for a a real estate brokerage company, a, a large one, and uh, she had said that they were making it mandatory. And the way they were do, they were doing it in like different ways, like this, where uh, they'd have these like contests for you to to win money, and you couldn't even you couldn't enter in it unless you were vaccinated. They did shit like that to try and first motivate oh, them, and then yeah. eventually turn it into like laying people off of that. That's fucking yeah, crazy, dude. Well, I mean, look, the data it, we're, we're now far out enough and we have data now that's showing that they, that these COVID vaccines were some of the least effective vaccines that are on the market. Okay. That's just a fact. This is just the data. Yeah, this is the current this data. This is what came out. They're just not, they're not that effective. That's just a fact. They have some effectiveness, but they're not that effective. And then the side effects, the data is showing um, 
if we were to use the standards that we've always used with vaccines, they would have never passed trials. In other words, no, yep. yes, massive amounts of people aren't dying. It isn't like whatever. But the amount of side effects, they would have halted if it were any other vaccine. So yeah, just like they pulled the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. So it's, 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 that's the data. The data is showing that. Um, and, it, and people know this. I mean, less and less people are like moving in this direction because they're like, well, it's, it doesn't work very well. And uh, I felt like shit last time I had to take a day off of work. Like those kind of side effects uh, would prevent something from passing um, regulate passing trials. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, of course this was pushed through because of, you know, emergency use or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So stuff. this, this episode airs after this event happens, but I don't know if you guys, this Saturday is the, uh, Jake Paul fight. Who's he fighting? He's the Anderson Silva. <gasps> oh, all right. Let's yeah. make a prediction because then it'll happen. This will air and then it will either look brilliant or stupid. So or, Jake Paul wins. You think he's going to beat Anderson Silva? I do. I really do. Um, Anderson's a good striker, though. He is a good striker, and I don't know what their weight is difference. I think Jake's got him on size. Doesn't he have reach, though? Anderson, probably. Anderson's out of his prime. He is. But, he is. But and I also heard, okay, and maybe fact check me on this one, that he's been knocked out twice by his sparring partners in this training camp. Anderson Silva? Yes. Oh, oh, that's no. not cool. Which cannot be a good sign <laughs> if, you're, if your sparring oh, partners no. are KOing you. <laughs> you know what's sad with fighters is that some of these guys with the greatest chins of all time, they'll get knocked out really bad once, and, and then that's, that's it afterwards. It. Yeah. They get knocked out really easily yeah, afterwards. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Yeah. A few times. So, well, um, I hope that's not the case. Maybe no, you can fact check me. for there. Anderson, but yeah. Yeah, I would like – I mean, I think this is how Jake is making all this money is I think probably 80% of the people are rooting against him. I think yeah, that, but yeah, he's, I he's done a brilliant job of being the heel yep. and is literally taking – which speaking of things I was wrong about, something I was very right about was the future <laughs> <laughs> of boxing and what it was going to look like. And I mean – and. No, no, more people are talking about this fight than like the the last big boxing match that we just had a couple of weeks ago. Like nobody was talking about that. Yeah. Everybody's talking about this, and it's just uh, like, yeah. What is it? did it say that Doug? Well, it says he misspoke, so he's kind of retracting what he said. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh, so he, he said it originally. He did he, say it, but now he's kind of retracting. Weird. It. Yeah. Oh, I, like, I, well, should, I, I shouldn't have spoke. said that, yeah, Adam. Yeah, since yeah. you're feeling so good about whatever being right or whatever, uh, did you see? <laughs> I sent this to the group. Something else I was right about? No. Oh, no. Something, something that I, I, I'm going to give you another opportunity here. Oh, okay. So yeah. Dyson oh, yeah. put out a video. Doug, I shared it to the group. Oh, God, Showing no. these Ooh, prototype robots that do household chores. Oh, More God. movement. <laughs> more movement Stop. happening. Stop. The audience doesn't even want to hear this crap No, no, anymore. no. I'm just giving you an opportunity no. to back out. No, dude. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm all in already on all right, this. All right, I'm, all, all right. I'm, I'm all in on this bet for sure. All so. right, all right, all right. It's not going to happen. I won't push anymore. Yeah, that was your last opportunity yeah. <laughs> before, before I buy one. We can speculate, though, on the company that will do it first. I mean, I think that's an interesting conversation on who is most likely to have, like, the autonomous cars or the robots in the, inside the house. Well, like, this Dyson convert, uh, Dyson commercial. Dyson would make cool. sense in terms of, like, uh, engineering in in the cleaning space yeah. right like uh, i mean it's tesla though who's claiming to have the going to have the first prototype though right of yeah the, but and they showed they always i don't know it just seems like um it, they'll make a stance and claim it and then it's like a couple you know 10 years later yeah. like they'll actually come out did with you it. see uh elon what he said about the cyber truck that if it goes in water it, like it's like a boat and it could dr it can like drive in water but was that a feature the whole time? I, he, I guess he made some. Maybe Doug can look it up. Dude, some some he's comment still he made. making little modifications. It's amphibious. That's so cool. That'd be yeah. rad. That yeah. is cool. There's is like it, a, a video of it going through the it water makes up for how ugly it is. It's not, it looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it look, I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm more. I'm more sold on the Rivian after I seen that video of it pulling next to the Raptor and the. Oh, uh, didn't they so do? Fast. Hold on. Then they just have a huge recall. Was it Rivian that had a huge recall? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I maybe uh, we got to double. We got to double check it after we see this video. Of, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, it's not a video. Oh, okay. Is but, it amphibious? Well, according to him, it will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat. <laughs> briefly. <laughs> briefly. <laughs> what does that mean? It will, it will not survive a forty-day, forty-night flood, but <laughs> so it can cross, you cross rivers. If you lakes. briefly drive over a puddle, you'll be okay. No, it says you'll be able to cross rivers and lakes. He has to be careful with shit like this because you know there's gonna be some dude that's gonna buy this and then yeah. there's gonna be a flood. Oh. oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive through this right now. Oh, did you see some of those Florida videos of like the the Lamborghinis and cars that people did have? you no? Did you see the uh -huh. hurricane videos where there were literal sharks in people's neighborhoods? No. Oh my. This God. was after the hurricane. It flooded, Terrifying. and there were sharks swimming through 
the streets. What? Yeah, dude. Dude, imagine how much you would swept up. How much you would shit your neighborhoods. You and your little yeah. inflatable, your inflatable. You get bit by a shark <laughs> in front of your house. That's crazy. That would be the worst. Yeah. So, is there a recall on the Rivian or my? Or my yes, tripping? it looks like there is. Oh, oh what was no. the? What was it for? Mm. Oh, let me see if I can. I, I think it was something bad. Like while you're doing that, I just so we. I know we have a PRX commercial today, Justin. Did you get the stuff ordered for Utah yet? I know. Yeah, that's a lot. When, so I tried to get as many of the items that we had in our trucky place as I could, so that way we, we have like the weight trees. We have you know the pull out with the with the uh, pull up bar on it. Okay. Um, they actually have a new feature which we were playing around with in the studio. The pulley. The pulley system. So it's it attaches to the actual rack. Okay. And so it has a, a little pulley. And then at the top, you can attach like your handles and grips and all that. So it has another pulley that kind of runs yeah, through. Yeah, so you can use an upper pulley or so lower pulley. So I'm so glad they made that because last year when I got mine in the garage, we actually bought one of those. Well, Katrina and I found one, and then we actually made it ourselves and put it the on the pulley. Yeah. Oh. So we have yeah. it, and it's uh, it looks identical to theirs. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. I imagine they have theirs is probably a little bit better quality because I think Katrina just found ours somewhere oh, on okay. Amazon or whatever. So, uh -huh. but theirs looks like it's. If it's you have more a home, solid. if you have a home gym and you have a rack, adjustable rack, adjustable bench, barbell dumbbells, and you have uh, an ability to do like some cable exercises, you have everything. Yeah. That was like the you're, last you're possible thing that yeah. like you could add, and I mean, they even have the fold out um, bench that can incline, so it's like it, it can be folded away nicely and everything, but you still get an incline option, which I thought was a good an I, improvement as well. You know, I was explaining this to somebody who was asking me about the whole tonal, and so they came by here and they saw that we had that up against the wall, oh, yeah. and, and they're oh, I think that's so. I was like, you know what? For the amount of money that you spend for that, and I was pointing, I pointed right over to the PRX rags for that. I said, you get that almost that entire setup right there. I said, you can also make payments on it like you are with a like a gym membership, so you barely feel it every single and month. You don't need the subscription. Yeah, and then once it's paid off, you'll yeah. never have to do. I it's mean, that'll you last you forever, 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 and you have what will really move the needle inside the gym. And that's my biggest thing with those cables is they're they're cool for upper body. I like them. It's, it's a, a cool, cool little machine. Yeah, cool but, little machine for upper, yeah. but lower body trash. No, absolute trash. When I look, I worked out uh, for the better part of the last fifteen years on just a rack, adjustable bench, dumbbells, barbells, and a cable. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I've worked out the ninety percent really of the time. You, you don't need anything else. No. I trained all my clients. I had a whole you know uh, trainers in there and wellness experts training clients. That's all we had. That's all yeah. we used. We had cables and, and that. You know, I'm actually surprised that there hasn't been a gym. That has made that popular where instead of having like this gym, because let's say most gyms, I would say, what would you say? 50% of it's filled up with a bunch of machines. Yeah. What if you had 25, 30 squat racks and yeah. that's, 20? It's like, it's like CrossFit that's gym. That's a big CrossFit gym. Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of like that, right? A yeah. massive, but a commercial size. Or like a, a college weight room. Like that's, Yes. That's, you know, a, actually, yeah, that's a good like platform. You know there. what the problem is, is that the... The, the perceived complexity of looking at a barbell and a rack and going, what do I do? Well, you got to get people that know what they're doing. I mean, yeah, I versus like, a machine yeah, that tells like, you what I to do. I feel like, I mean, come on, people do that even with machines. Machines actually look more complex. You walk up to it. Sometimes I have to go like, what the hell is this for? Mm. So that's just- Yeah, but as, at least there's a picture. And it's I like, know, oh, I know. I mean, that's the, that's the conversation now, but maybe, I mean, I could, I could see that. Look how much gyms have evolved since we, we've been in them. Yeah. They've definitely changed the way they look. Yeah. And we there was a time when squat racks were absolutely dusty and nobody used them. Now there's lines for them. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually start to the conversation. If weight rooms well, are dominated I, I, by yes. this. I think like in terms of a layout of like a cool box and like maximum efficiency of space, like I would totally go the foldable rack route. Like think about how much space you could open it up for class settings, right? bring it back in, like and like have a lot of different station options that way, and be able to keep a lot of clutter out of uh, the way of the members. Yeah, I, I, that, a, the, a gym like a, a superior gym for me would be mostly free weights with some bodybuilding kind of machines that I have nostalgia for. That's it. But you often you often see the opposite. What you see a lot of in the big box gyms is tremendous investment in like tons of cardio equipment. Yeah, cardio equipment and machines. Yeah, that's you see so much of that. And imagine again having a gym where you had you know that many platforms and squat racks and yeah. and bench press yep. like. Boy, that would my be... ideal gym would literally be just racks alongside the walls, and then the middle is all grass for me to do all my sled work and everything else. Mm. Uh, cool. Did you guys? Uh, oh, you guys! Of course, you didn't see this because this was mine. 
Uh, you know, creatine potentially has anti-cancer properties. Yes. One more thing. God, I yeah, couldn't geez. sell this freaking. I wish I invented yeah, creatine. Yeah. Is it, it not okay? So the uh, ultimate. We've been saying product. this forever. You in particular have been saying this forever. Um, is it? It uh, is there a multivitamin that has it yet? Because it's I, that has to probably be, that has to be the first. It's thing starting that, to make its way into the. Into you the think it'll space. make its way into cereal? <laughs> Uh, maybe it definitely like it definitely going to make to me it's definitely going to make it into a multivitamin. Yeah. If it's becoming that like that that many health benefits to it that I at least three grams right I see like a three gram yeah. thing of in in, in, a, in a daily multivitamin you'll see or maybe even half that just some right mm. I think that's going to be a selling point for a multivitamin if it's not already do you see any Doug I'm looking for them uh, I don't see any yet. why haven't we made that yeah. you're missing out on probably I, well i think the, the public i think that you you can very strongly and easily make the case to the public to take creatine you would just have to counter the myth that it makes you this huge buffed whatever just like strength trainer right it's the same argument or conversation but yeah it's i mean it's it creatine imp increases atp in the cells atp is the primary source of energy for your cells so your anti-cancer cells your Brain cells, your heart, your everything has more of this energy. They're going to operate better, and you get better mitochondrial health. So it's like this longevity supplement, this health supplement. Yes, you also get stronger. Yes, you also recover better. Yes, it probably helps your bones. Now, does that is that still true in a cancerous state? So you know how like we know that testosterone is incredibly healthy, like uh, for you, but in a cancerous state, then it can be depends on the cancer. It, I don't know. It's so I don't. They didn't do it. Okay, so it, I, I have to I have to be clear. It, feed it wasn't it wasn't people who had cancer who took creatine. It was what's the effects of creatine on the cells that fight cancer, and it it strengthens them and improves them. So that's why they said creatine could have some anti-cancer properties. Preventative, but, uh, yeah. Yes, qualities. but um, that's a good question because when you're in a cancer state, almost anything can change, right? Like carbohydrates could feed cancer, so can fats. Right. Proteins can feed it, like. MTOR, which is good, but in the cancer state can fuel cancer cells. So I don't know. That's a very good question. But I, but according to what I read, um, it strengthens the cells that go out and kill cancer cells. So it helps improve their health. What's that say there, Doug? Up there? Oh, I, I don't know. That's a different screen oh, that I'm on. Shopping online. So. Oh, while, we're, yeah. while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. No, what I see is there's a lot of conversation about taking multivitamins and creatine at the same time, but I don't see any combined. There, well, I we mean, just gave the idea away. Yeah, there we go. It. Good yeah, job, yeah. Adam. So, yeah, like I said, someone's going to make a whole $100. Look out. Hey, you got to go check out this company, Live On Labs. They make nutrients and supplements that have pharmaceutical grade technology delivery systems. So they use liposomal technology to bring these nutrients to the target tissue. So oftentimes what happens when you take a multivitamin or a supplement is you just get expensive urine, not with Live On Labs. This stuff gets to where you want it to because, again, they use pharmaceutical grade technology. Go check them out. Right now, you can get liposomal glutathione for free when you bundle it with the B-complex and vitamin C. That's only for Mind Pump listeners. You go to liveonlabs.com forward slash MP. That's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S dot com forward slash MP for that hookup. Our first caller is Chris from Nebraska. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, thanks again for everything you guys do. I've been listening to you guys for about four years now. Um, so I'll just hop right into it. So the question I have is how to how to lose fat without losing weight. So a little background about me. Um, I'm 36 years old, five foot ten and 235 pounds. I'm currently doing MAPS anabolic. I'm in week two of phase one um, and really focusing on my strength. Uh, for the longest time, I did more bodybuilding with uh, um, cardio. So I do lifting and cardio probably four to six times a week. Um, and then got to the point where I was doing either uh, CrossFit or then preparing for like a triathlon. Uh, COVID hit and uh, I got more into powerlifting. And while I really enjoyed the increase in, in strength, I noticed I put on some fat. So I started doing cardio again. Um, I recently deployed, well, I'm in the National Guard. I recently deployed to East Africa. And while I was there, I was doing a lot of powerlifting, um, still putting on weight, but felt good. Um, and was able to uh, main, keep, keep the fat off with cardio. So now I'm back, uh, rolling back into a normal nine to five job, trying to uh, uh, still, still at about 235. Um, 
still lifting strong, but I've noticed I put on some fat. I have a 43 inch waist and I really understand the, the high, the, the waist height kind of, um, waist height ratio for health. And so I'd like to get down to about 18% body fat or somewhere around there and just be able to maintain it for the long term. Okay. And now in the question that you wrote to us, Chris, you said that you'd like to stay at the same weight, but bring your waist down from 43 to 36. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and you said you want to get down to 18% body fat. Do you know what body fat percentage you're at now? Uh, my body fat percentage is about 24, 25%. Okay. That's what I would have guessed with that, with that waist size. So I'm going to do some math for you just so we could get more specific with the, or more detailed, I guess, with the goal. So right now you're sitting at 235 pounds at 25% body fat. That means your lean body mass is 176 pounds. Okay. So at the moment you have lean body mass, which includes bone, water, muscle, organs. So everything that's not fat at 176 pounds. If you weigh 235 pounds at 18% body fat, then your lean body mass would be 192 pounds, okay? So what you're asking basically is to gain 16 to 17 pounds of muscle while simultaneously losing 16 to 17 pounds of body fat. So that's that's specifically what the question is uh, that you're asking. Does that sound like a reasonable question when I pose it that way to you? Um. That does sound a little aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, it's just it's just a little unrealistic since you're trying to cut. I think I think uh, I would worry less about uh, exactly. Like, I mean, I would focus on one thing. Like either I want to let's focus on building some muscle right now, and then that's the focus. Or hey, let's focus mm -hmm. on getting your waist down. Right. So, and and the inevitable is probably going to happen if we're going to go from a 43 down to a 36. We're going to lose some weight. The goal is to lose mostly fat. Uh, but the reality is we'll probably even lose a little bit of of muscle along the way. But trying to simultaneously mm -hmm. bu build muscle while also shrinking your waist down to 36, I think, the, you know, that was the point of Sal posing the question like that is like, okay, that's kind of crazy, right? To add 17 right. pounds of muscle while you're also shrinking your waist. Yeah, that, that wouldn't even happen with a beginner. Um, and you've been working out for a while, right? Yeah, I've been working out since I was 14. So about... 22 years. Okay. So the, the, the odds that you're the, the, I guess the odds that you'll be able to even gain 17 pounds of muscle at this point is actually quite low. You, you're, you've, you've, you've been working out for a long time. You're 36 years old. So you're, you're, you're probably at the peak of the amount of muscle and strength that you're going to potentially, or that you could potentially gain. Not saying that there's no more potential, but an additional 17 pounds of lean body mass, a tremendous amount of, of muscle mass to gain. So I would focus at this point, and it's okay. You can you can always focus on building. You can focus on cutting, but you got to give mm -hmm. yourself some reasonable um, goals. Otherwise, you're going to set yourself up for failure or uh, a disappointment or just go too aggressively in one direction or another. I would focus on getting lean at this point. At 24 25% body fat, the health risks associated with body fat are present now. So once you, as long as you're below like 18 17%, um, you, you know, you you can be very healthy and fit at 18% or 12%, for example. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. But once you pass like 20% for a man, you start to see kind of health risks associated with body fat percentage, regardless of your fitness level. So okay. if you've been training for a while, you've been working out for a while, um, and you, like you said, you kind of bulk to this this point, you feel really strong. I'd focus on cutting and I'd make it slow. I'd make it a slow process and try yeah. to preserve muscle. But what'll happen is you're probably gonna lose about 20 pounds. And you might lose a little bit of lean body mass uh, while doing that. But you'll look more jacked. Oh, yeah, 215 mm -hmm. yeah. at your height. You know, I would say between 205 to 215 at your height would be look, we'd look incredible. At 510, you'd have a really uh, a good amount of muscle, mobility, good strength, all that stuff. And then from there, you could play the mini bulk, mini cut game where you get a little stronger, get a little leaner, get a little stronger, get a, leaner, a little leaner. But yeah, typically when someone bulks, uh, or at least when, I, when a male client would bulk, I wouldn't allow them to go higher than about 18, 19%, just because then you start, it depends. Now, if they're power lifters and they're in a, like unlimited weight class and we're just looking at max strength, we don't care about other factors, then that's different. But um, but in terms of the health risks and stuff like that, I would say, uh, I would go to the cut. I'd go to the cut right now. Chris, and I wouldn't let yourself get up too high. Chris, point. have you have you counted calories? Do you know about how many calories you're eating a day right now? Yeah. So right now I average about 2,600 calories. 
Um, I usually hit protein pretty easy. Um, I know that's hard for some people. Um, and then my fats are usually around 80 grams and then my carbs are between 150 to 230. What's your, what's your activity level? It's kind of low for a guy your size. Are you, are you pretty sedentary or you, do you have a job where you move a lot? What's your day look like? No. So, um, my job, so yes, my job is pretty sedentary. I do take one to three 15 minute walks a day, just one to maintain my sanity, but two to also get that uh, to get a little extra cardio in. Um, and then, like I said, maps anabolic, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, and then I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai, uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays. Do you, uh, do you happen to track steps at all? Do you have any idea like what's your daily step? Cause you're, you're a perfect person who wants oh, no. like, okay. So someone like you who wants to lean out, but maintain as much muscle your size. Like I love to give like, uh, our, I love to give step goals as a way to I increase the caloric deficit because you're already at 2,600. If you would have told me you're eating 36, 3,800 calories and I'd say, Oh, let's cut our calories a little bit, keep our activity going, strength training maps out of bulk's perfect. And you're going to lean out nice and slow, but you're already down to 2,600. I wouldn't want to quite cut your calories that much more right now because i think a, a guy oh okay yeah i would actually i would actually do it through movement throughout my day so you're kind of on the right track already but i would be mm -hmm. more specific about it like i'd get myself a fitbit or an apple watch or something to track my steps and start to give my step incre incremental step goals and and you can do that through these 15 minute walks or a one long hour walk i don't care how you get it just mm -hmm. we would set a goal of okay I'd, I'd track you for a week, see that you're averaging, let's say, 6,000 steps a day. And I say, okay, Chris, our goal next week is to get uh, eight to 10,000 steps a day consistently. And let's do that for the next two weeks and see how your body responds. And then after that, I go, okay, let's get us up to 10 to 12,000 steps. And I just, I would incrementally move you up through steps. And if, till you get to a point where you're like, man, Adam, I actually have to get on a piece of cardio and do it for an hour just to get our steps. That's kind of how I would move you up. Because you're already at 2,600 calories, it would be a total different story if you told me your your calorie intake is much higher than well, that. Well, let's get deeper into that. Chris, uh, how often do you track your calories and how consistently do you track them? Uh, I track them daily to the point where I'm even like, so like anyone else, I, I like my beer. Um, so I'll even track the beer and the, you know, the drinks like that. Okay. And sometimes it's a guesstimate because, you know, the, uh, the calories on beer might always not be exact. Um, but it, it's pretty close. And so when I see that, I'm like, okay, so I've had, I know I'm going to have four drinks tonight. Uh, this is where my, my macros and calories need to be for the rest of the day. Got it. You know, what's interesting, Chris, I don't necessarily have, uh, data to support this, but I've had clients, uh, who just simply cut the alcohol mm -hmm. out and even replace those calories with like protein and get leaner. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they get leaner. Alcohol has got this really interesting negative effect on muscle and, uh, and, and well, just body composition in general, it tends to, in my experience, promote fat storage and muscle loss. So just, just putting it out okay. there, it, yeah. you know, I know that's, you know, people enjoy, you know, their drinks and you know, whatever. And but it, if it you may, have an aggressive goal, and especially if you're coming in yeah. trying to maximize both mm -hmm. pathways, um, yeah, that's definitely deterrent. I was going to interject and say yeah. the same thing I've noticed with my clients. So something to consider, you know, really kind of cutting down on. It's weird. I've had literally, I've had clients cut out 200 calories worth of alcohol, replace it with 200 calories worth of quality food and get leaner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've seen that consistently. Oh, wow. even, even if you just did it for 30 days, just to see how your body responds, because that'll probably be enough time for you to like, you know, be enlightened by it or show that it doesn't really make a big difference for you. I, I think that's great. I'd advice. be, I, I was, I'm, every time I'm surprised, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. The calories are equated for, but obviously the metabolism right. is much more and the, the, you know, the, the body is much more complicated than we realize. So just putting it yes. out there, because that alone might give you, might put you in the right direction. Yeah, and it's the direction I'm trying to go. I mean, uh, like I said, I like my beer. And so instead of drinking as many nights, I'm, I'm down to about two or three nights a week. So uh, cutting a little more probably would not hurt. Okay. And yeah. then the last thing is, you know, I know we typically tell people to get their calories up to a certain point before they cut. But what's really interesting is there's an individual variance in how sensitive someone's body is to cutting calories mm -hmm. and adding calories. So like on one end of the spectrum, we could have a woman who's eating as many calories as you are and she'll be like, okay, I'm in a good position. Then she'll cut her calories and her body still doesn't respond super great. And, and there's a lot of theories as to why that could potentially happen. We don't have to necessarily get into that. And then I'll have other clients will cut two, 300 calories and they'll start to see fat loss. 
So I know your calories are at 2,600. You could try bringing them down to 2,300, which isn't a big cut. Just see what happens. Be consistent with it for a few weeks and see yeah. what ends up happening because you may be more sensitive to the calorie cut than, than you may think. In other words, you might not need to cut so low. Okay. All right. But I, I think that the, the moral of this is uh, it's, it's move in one direction and try, and, and try to set your goals to be much more realistic because the, the initial goal that you gave us, I mean, it's just not going to happen. I got you. Okay. All right. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in, Chris. You know, right. you're, you're following Maps Anabolic right now, right? I am, yep. Do you have any other any of our other programs? Yeah, so I actually, uh, while I was on deployment, I did Maps Performance and a little bit of Maps Aesthetic, aesthetic and then I did a little bit of Maps Aesthetic when I got back okay. uh, to the States. So I'm going to send you... Give uh, them strong. I was just going to say, I'm going to yeah, send you Maps Strong, and then uh, okay. Maps Map Powerlift would be a good follow-up to that, but I'll send you Maps Strong for free. Awesome. Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. You got Bye, it, Chris. Thanks for calling right in, Chris. Take care. So I don't I don't like cutting his calories because of how big he is, dude. He's a and, and, and big and like he's muscular. I you mean, know, we a, didn't ask we didn't ask him how he felt eating twenty six hundred calories. You know, sometimes mm, people are like, Oh, yeah. I, feel, I feel full and satisfied. Right. I, I should have. I sh I just assumed another, I just assumed eating only twenty six hundred quit. I I I assumed actually that was low for him. Mm -hmm. I I assumed twenty six hundred is him trying to eat clean and good because that's low for that yeah. size. Dude. But we should have asked him. I like, mean, when, so his what was he? What would you? One seventy six. One hundred seventy six pounds of muscle. Body mass. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's a good amount of muscle yeah, on you, yeah. and to be only eating that. Uh, and he also said, did he, I hear that correctly? He was, he's rolling jujitsu twice a week too. Jujitsu Muay Thai plus, plus, yeah, plus mass twice a week. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean, that's, we need to ask him how he felt. I should ask that because I know people who eat less and they're like, I feel good. This is what I want. But, you know? but drink, not, not everybody, hey, most people. Drinking three, three to four drinks, three to four days a week is a lot. It is. Even yeah. two days that's a, a lot. That's a lot of empty. Ca that's a, so the thing too about alcohol is alcohol is empty I calories. I Even a, I, I try to explain this to clients that like them. like, I'd rather see you eat a fucking cheeseburger or a goddamn corn dog because even that, even that terrible food is got, it's gotta be the worst thing I've ever yeah, seen. It doesn't give for you body yeah. composition. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen somebody. I've actually, I've always seen somebody's body composition improve when, lim when eliminating it's, alcohol. It, it, and alco I've never seen alcohol and candy are like the worst. Yeah. Like yeah. just, there's, there's very, very little nutritional value you're getting from any of that. And so it's just a waste just of calories. Inflammation and everything else. That and then with. when you're, when, when you're trying to go the opposite direction, it's just, you know, I, if you're gaining and you're bulking like that to me, okay, then yeah. we can, we can ever have a little enjoyment every once in a while. Cause we're on the game, but yeah. on the cut, it's just like, well, that's just one you. of those things. Like you're coming in with, with an aggressive goal and you want your cake and eat it too. Like you got got to really tighten up from every single angle possible to even get close to that Goldilocks zone of being able to burn fat and like maintain your muscle mass. Yeah. That's a really difficult uh, goal and trajectory that you're setting. Yeah. Well, and, I, for. And, I, and I do want people to do what I did, which is when you got your body fat percentage, figure out your lean body mass. Then you know. Factored off of that. Yeah, but then you know, like, oh, my goal actually sounds crazy. Because when I positioned it like that, okay, yeah. so you want to gain 17 pounds of muscle and lose 17 pounds of body fat? Like, both are very hard to do on their own. One <laughs> yeah. of them is actually almost yeah. impossible for somebody who's There's no real room for time. flexibility, dude. Yeah. So. Well, and, and then you add, then you throw in the other element that his calories are that low. Yeah. Ima imagine if he said, if he answered, oh, I eat 4,200 calories a day. Like now, now we're talking like we could seriously lean yeah. out, maintain a good amount of muscle mass, but you're that low of calories too. Like, yeah, there's no, you can't really go down from there. No. Yeah. Our next caller is Emily from Ontario. Hi, Emily. How can we help you? Hi guys. Thank you so much for having me. So I recently had a deep tissue massage done and the therapist saw immediately that my shoulder symmetry was off. Uh, he said it was impressive, not in a good way. And he couldn't believe the number of knots I had in my back and my shoulders. So he said I needed to slow down my workouts. And because he could tell I was lifting too heavy. I wasn't tensing my core enough. And he could tell my breath work needed improvement. So for the past few weeks, I've been lowering my weights, increasing my reps, and trying to focus on my posture and just getting that full rep motion that we all know and love. So my question is, uh, if I keep this up instead of lifting to my max at every workout, 
does this help in the long term of preventing those knots I had or at the very least minimizing them? I do want to go back to lifting heavy. I really did love that. Yeah, let's let's first talk about a yeah. uh, massage therapist. Did you leave with uh, uh, crystals and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, supplements? It's kind of like taking uh, dental advice from your mechanic. I don't know if uh, I would do that or body not. Work, so yeah. I've worked with body work specialists. Oh, that's and, what my wife and, does for a living and, and taught the school. It's not... Uh, half the time they annoy the shit. I mean, not because they don't know what they're doing in their field. They often, they obviously know what they're doing in their field. But I've had this happen so many times. I've had this happen with chiropractors too, where the, my client comes back. My chiropractor said I should stop... Yeah. lifting weights or my massage therapist said, and I'm like listen I'm gonna tell what if I told you stop seeing your stupid chiropractor because you know because I can adjust you here at the gym it's they, they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to exercise now let's address the second part you said you like you you work out to your max all the time that's probably inappropriate okay so you know a, a broken clock has the right time twice a day he might have been right in terms of you working out too hard too often if you have asymmetry in your shoulders it's more likely due to bad connection to your muscles, bad form, technique. So I would focus more on proper technique, proper form, making lightweight feel heavier, not necessarily going heavier. So getting better technique, better form, better connection. But I need I need more information. So oh, I also want to know too: Are you following any of our programs? Because right away, Prime and Symmetry come to mind right, right now for mm -hmm. me. So what are you what are, what are you following of ours? I'm not, please don't yell at me. I'm not following any yet. I wasn't sure which one to start with. Symmetry sounded like a good start. Uh, my problem is my ego. When I go to the gym, I want to go hard and uh, to take a st couple step backs and say, focus on balance. Don't focus on a sweat is pretty hard for me. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want better results or do you just want to get sore? Mm. It, better results. I want yeah. to do this for the rest of my life. So my yeah. my goal is long term with the gym for sure. You're gonna love map symmetry, Emily. I mean, yeah. it's literally it's gonna balance your body out, and it's probably gonna develop the best physique you've ever had, just based off of what I'm hearing. So I'm gonna send you map symmetry, and then a good follow up to that would be maps anabolic. Uh, but symmetry is probably where you need to go. Mm -hmm. But if you're feeling tight, you're feeling you know because muscle knots. All right. So what are muscle knots? There's a lot of theories as to what that is, but it's probably your body trying to protect itself. So muscles are slightly flexed to try to limit ranges of motion because your body doesn't necessarily feel safe or stable outside of a particular range of motion. Some form of instability yeah. may have occurred, which then <laughs> that's why symmetry I think will be so revealing is be, to be able to kind of see yeah. uh, where yeah. that uh, root kind of stems from. Have you watched the free webinar that Justin did on Maps Prime? No, not yet. Okay. I didn't know it was available. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have you, Doug. What's you the, can what, do that today? What's That'd the website for that? For uh, MapsPrimeWebinar.com. MapsPrimeWebinar.com. Yeah, MapsPrimeWebinar.com. It's a, and what I want you to do is go through <sighs> that. Justin takes you through the three tests that we have in in Maps Prime. I think focusing on the Zone One test is going to be really. Uh, they're all going to be beneficial to you, but Zone One primarily. Focusing on that part, uh, that portion of 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 the. Uh, the webinar and before you go into symmetry, the combination of the two of those. And then I agree with Sal, I, I would run anabolic and then even performance after that, that would be kind of the, the order of operation as far as uh, programs for you. And that'll give you uh let's see, nine months. That'll be nine months of workout programming. If you went in that order, map symmetry, maps, anabolic maps, performance. Um, and I think you'd be blown away by the results that you'll get following them in that order. But we'll send you symmetry because that's the one that you need to start with right now. And follow it to a T, okay? Trust the programming, follow it to a T, watch the videos, and watch what happens to your body. I think you'll you'll be more than surprised. Okay, so does that mean that I can continue to lift heavy? I don't need to drop my weight so low. I can well, in the continue what I'm doing. In the program, you'll see that there's phases where you're focused on heavy, and then there's phases where you're not. So follow the program. So you're going to see in phase one of like MAPS Anabolic, phase, well, you're going to do symmetry first, which is isometrics first, and you won't get to the heavy lifting till the end of the program. Yeah. So, but so follow it the way it's laid out. So you will get your opportunity. It's be mentally challenging for you, yeah, for sure. That's right. It's going to be challenging at the beginning, but trust the process. Also, trust that in the program you'll get to lift heavy. But we want to lay a solid foundation for you first before you start to do that. And that's something even your massage therapist would agree with. And, and consider this, Emily. Uh, heavy is relative. So, like, I could make a two hundred. I could make two hundred pounds on a squat feel just as heavy as three hundred pounds with my technique my tempo and my form. 
So it's not necessarily about the weight that's on the bar or on the dumbbell. It's just about how heavy you can make it feel. And so if you're looking to balance your body out and you're noticing imbalances and instability, then what you probably should do is focus on using lighter weight, but then making it feel heavier through control, stability, and tempo. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I recall your last episode about the 15 minute workouts, how effective they are. So I do recall you mentioning that. So my follow up question to that, though. um, So since I've been dropping the weights, uh, my body weight has been dropping and I'm pretty concerned that it's muscle. And I know you guys can't tell without a full assessment, but is that something to expect when I lift uh, lighter? Is that you are going to lose some muscle along the way? No, no, no. Unless you're unless you've done something dramatically different with your calories and your protein intake, it's most likely, if anything, you're actually leaning out and building muscle because the novelty. See, the problem with always lifting heavy and training one way all the time is the body gets very adapted to that and transitioning over to lighter weight, even though maybe you feel like maybe I'm not as strong because I'm lifting lighter weight, it's novel to the body and which will stimulate more muscle growth. So it it's extremely beneficial for you to re- do that. more recovered. So I think that's what people miss a lot of the times is, is that whole process it takes for your body to rebuild itself. So to allow it to adequately recover a lot of times is what's necessary for you to push through to the next phase. How, much, we, weight, how much weight have you lost, Emily? I have lost 55 pounds as of last year. Wait a minute. You said, hold on a second. You said you went lighter and you lost some weight. Is it the 55 pounds you're talking about or is it more recent, like a little bit of weight? So uh, during the lockdowns, I lost 55 pounds just with diet alone. And then I started to go to the gym where I've sort of maintained where I'm at. And so I've always teetered between like 161 to 164 but since I started lifting lighter, I'm now like 156, 159. Oh, uh, okay. so, it, it, you probably, so yeah. probably body fat or water or both. And I'd be surprised if your diet hadn't changed dur- during that process as well. Because typically going, changing your rep range, changing the focus tends, like Adam said, tends to cause, stimulate muscle growth. And you're not going to lose, if you're still lifting, let me put it this way. Studies show that way less volume and intensity is required to keep muscle than it is to build it. That's right. So you could train your ass off, gain 10 pounds of muscle, then go at 50% of everything, 50% of intensity, 50% of volume, 50% of frequency, and you won't lose any muscle. You won't build any, but you won't lose any. So you're not, I wouldn't worry about you losing tons of muscle right now. If anything, your diet probably changed and you might might be either dropping some water or some body fat. I'm I'm really excited too. I mean, uh, hopefully you trust us. Um, if you haven't ran any of our programs and you allow us to guide you for the next nine months, uh, I think we'll blow you away. I really do. I think that the, if you just trust the process, trust our programming, getting a conversation with you, kind of get an idea of where you're at and what you need, the order of those programs that we just laid out for you is literally perfect. Like, I promise you, if you trust that process and you just follow it to a T one time through, it'll, it'll change your life. I swear to God. I'll trust you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I just want to thank you, not just for the information, but your humble beginnings and your personal stories. It means a lot to beginners to know, like, we started where you were. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, thank Emily. Thank Thanks you. for calling in. Yeah. Uh, in, in the order of annoyance from people telling my clients to stop lifting weights, number one is <laughs> number one is doctors. Yes. I've had doctors. I've had clients come well, back. Like, you know, my doctor said lower just, back. Yeah. yeah, it's like, uh, and then in body work specialists, chiropractors. The well, doctors are the worst. The doctors yeah. are the worst because they have the authority. That's what I mean. Yeah. The counter so, them is so yeah, it's so hard. It's like you yeah. you know, good luck trying to t- t- convince somebody who you barely know that their doctor is wrong and you're right. So you're that's a losing battle. Right. But the the chiros and the massage therapists. I mean. I'm glad you pointed out the your the broken clock point is that yeah. it's not necessarily that he's completely wrong. It's just terrible advice just to to just to make a blanket statement like that to a client and make them think, oh, it's the lifting. You're lifting too much and you're, it's too heavy. That's the problem. Like, no, if you were lifting with proper mechanics, you can lift as heavy as you possibly want. You're just going to build muscles and be great for your body. So that general advice yeah. to the average person makes them think that, oh, shit, lifting heavy does this to my body. Therefore, I shouldn't do that, which that's awful. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, her following doing the isometric and symmetry, her doing maps prime, you know, I really wanted her to go to performance. Um, but I do think the order we, uh, because someone based off of what she, what's going on with her, um, she's a perfect example of someone who I would take all overhead pressing and change to Z press. 
Mm. Because uh, what when someone gets all those knots from lifting heavy, what, normally what it is is because they're pressing and like one side is like yep. cheating or getting favored on one, or it's off. Right? right. It's not. There's it's some asymmetry. That's, that's right. Sure. There's some asymmetry. It's not tracking properly. And the Z. This is what makes the Z press so awesome. Yeah, is the and, great and, equalizer. And I would. I would tell her, go ahead, go heavy, go heavy as you want. The only the only rule I have is you got to press it above your head. You got to stabilize it for a second and then come back down and then go for it. Go well, symmetry is going to highlight that for sure. Yeah. It She's will. not going to be able. You know. It's funny. I have, a, I have a personal story around this. This is actually how I met Doug. There was a, a chiropractor. So I had a body work specialist that worked in my studio. She went to this chiropractor. He told her, you need to stop lifting weights. And I was like, oh, so annoying. Yeah. So I went and talked to him, invited him to my studio, and I trained him. After I trained him for a few weeks, totally changed his mind. Yeah. He, was a, he was a massive Stopped advocate. giving out the and, advice. And then he ended up referring that's Doug. How you, that's that, how yeah. Doug became That's how you client. got that chiro? That's right. Oh, I didn't know that he That's was. Great. I know the story about that Cairo, but I didn't know that he was. He, told, he was originally telling your clients. He to, told one. He, <laughs> yeah, he he told her. He said, "Don't That's lift weights anymore." I've like, never heard you tell that. Yeah, story. Yeah, so I'm like, you know what? He's in the area. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna <laughs> talk to here, him. Listen here, cocksucker. And I know I brought him in. I said, "Let me train you." And I blew his mind. He worked out with me, and I blew his mind. He felt incredible, and that was it. And then he re re referred people, and Doug uh, was one of the people he that's, referred. That's great. I, I didn't. I didn't know that part. Our next caller is Priscilla from Georgia. Hey, Priscilla, how can we help you? Hey, thanks for, uh, thank you guys for taking my call. Really appreciate your guys' work. Uh, my car calls in regards to incorporating cardio in a weightlifting program. Um, just to give some background info, I'm a United States Marine, 24 years old, uh, about 5'5". Five five. And uh, so the Marine Corps has two fitness tests we do every year. And the one that's in January to June, it's the uh, physical fitness test. And it consists of planks, uh, pull-ups, and a three-mile run. Uh, I'm like pretty okay. I'm um, fine with the, the strength portion, so the pull ups and plank I'm fine with, but I kind of struggle with the three mile um, in terms of trying to get the max amount of points. And uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate my uh, cardio routine with my lifting uh, routine so that I can run a 21 minute three mile. I'm currently at around a 24 minute 30 second, um, but I know that. Like listening from uh, to your guys' podcast, it's kind of hard to like balance everything. But I was wondering, what would you guys suggest as to how to incorporate cardio into a weightlifting program? All right, so I'm going to give you some general advice, and then I'll get a little bit more specific. But uh, so you're saying you're okay with the strength; you could pass yes. the strength test. You'll keep strength easier than it takes you uh, to build it in the first place. So, what does your workout look like now? What's your breakdown in terms of strength training uh, and running? I actually currently was working uh, using anabolic or uh, in the process of, I think, the third phase, but then I had to stop because of other training. So right now I'm just kind of like doing HIIT workouts um, for like the 15, 20 minutes I ha that I have. And it's – so using anabolic, I was basically just doing like your guys' routine. But besides that, before that, it was just like regular, like random things in the gym, like uh, the machines and stuff. So, so you're not doing, I, can I can max out. The you're, you're, not doing any, you're not doing any running at all right now? Actually, today we started a 100-mile um, uh, competition for the month of November, so I just ran six miles. But besides that, I wasn't anticipating having to do that. I just think I meant in general after this this uh, challenge is over. Okay. So so before that, you weren't running as part of your workout? Uh, I would say like probably once or twice a week. Okay. Like probably like three miles each. Okay. Wait, so wait, 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 one more question though, before because she did say she went for she was doing anabolic and then you went down to kind of this hit thing because of other stuff. Is that other stuff still happening, or we can can we potentially? Because what I'm thinking in my head, like maps anabolic with you know running you know three times a week would be like this this perfect protocol in my head because I think I think you can call and, and it would literally be a three mile run three times a week on your on your off days of of weightlifting, and I think that would be perfect. But if if anabolic is too much right now, then we could also do like a maps 15 with that same protocol I just said. So what, what's your, what's your schedule like? So my training now it's about to end, uh, this week. And that's when I can go back to my, Oh, that's when I was planning to go back to, to anabolic. Um, but I think it was more of the time, the timing part of it. My training just took more time than I thought it would. And it kind of, with everything else involved, I couldn't commit to anabolic at the time being. But after this week, I should be done with the training. All right, I well, be good. well, generally speaking, if you ran two or three days a week, I don't think you should do three miles each time. I'm going to disagree a little bit. I think you should do 
a short run, a run where you're doing three miles, and then one where you're doing a little bit longer. So they're different intensities. The shorter one is fast. Obviously, the one that's three miles, you're oh, I'm okay with that. You're cruising just to mix it up. Okay. Yeah. So you want to have something that looks more like a sprint, something that looks like what you're trying to do, and then something that's just a long. So what do you think? One, two, and three. Something like that. Yeah. One, two, three. Try and get a fast one mile. One time a week, then do a moderate two, and then a, and then your three. I like that. Yeah, and then in lift, but but to be more specific, uh, I'm going to send you Maps Cardio because I think that's going to lay it all out perfect for you. Okay. Maps wow. Cardio literally right. incorporates cardio with your workouts, and it's endurance focused. You you shouldn't lose any strength on it. If anything, you might gain a little strength. Perfect. Wow. But I think it'll target. I really that. Sorry. I, was, I really appreciate that because I know you guys said that you can't you can't really do both in terms of the cardio like strength you either lose your some strength or you lose some cardio so i didn't know if me running as much as i can while doing anabolic if it'd be too much for my body and that would be like detrimental to to the workout well or running as much as you can would be so yeah running as much as you can would be that's why there's a fine line between that and i think that's why we created maps cardio is to give like the optimal amount of weight training to coincide with you know somebody who wants yeah. to increase cardio and, and there's another yeah, part to support your cardio efforts as opposed to like having the strength be the priority so you're just kind of shifting your focus of adaptation a bit yeah and there's there's another part to this too the strength test the strength portion of the test that you're doing is pull-ups a plank and push-ups right Okay. Uh, no push-ups, just a plank, just a plank and the pull-ups. Okay. So planks and pull-ups are also quite dependent on body weight. Um, so so you could lose you might lose strength in your max squat. Mm -hmm. You may lose strength in your max deadlift and your bench press. But oftentimes gaining some endurance, maybe losing a few pounds, even strength if it's a few pounds of muscle. Will go up. Your strength to weight ratio goes up. So when I lose weight, my pull-ups tend to go up even if my total strength goes down. So I don't think you'll suffer on the pull-ups and the plank following a program like, like MAPS Cardio. What I think is going to happen is your pull-ups and plank will be the same or a little better, and your endurance is just going to dramatically go up. And then after that, I'd like to see you do something like uh, MAPS Symmetry. I would like to see you kind of balance things out with a unilateral type training. Yeah. But but MAPS Cardio, is, it's, gonna, it's, all, it's all there for you. Yeah, literally, it'll be laid out for you. Follow That's, it as it's, as it's planned, and you'll be all set. I'd also look at potentially MAPS 15 for the times when you have to cut back. Instead of going to a uh, hit style all the time for your short workouts, MAPS 15 is a great alternative to still strength training but keeping it a short workout too. But I agree with Sal. Cardio, okay. cardio then symmetry in that order, order would be ideal. And I think Doug will send you over cardio. All right. I really appreciate that, that guys, and all the suggestions too. Um, but like everyone always says, you guys have – producing like awesome content. I just found you guys a few months ago and I feel like I've learned so, so much from you guys. So I appreciate the time again and um, hope you guys enjoy your rest of your year. Happy early holidays. Yep. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Thank for, you. Thanks for what you do too. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, so that was that was a, that was actually a good question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a quite a balanced question, and um, I mean, again, her strength goals involve pull ups and a plank. Mm -hmm. And I remember when this first happened to me, I went on a cut, yeah, and I my pull ups went up, and I'm like, oh wow, I built muscle while I lost weight. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I lost weight. Wait a minute, I, I lost weight, easier. so yeah. <laughs> this is easier, which yeah. is great. And and you're still yeah. working on maintaining your your muscle mass and strength yeah. while you're trying to pursue cardio. It's just, yeah, it's just this shift now. That's the high priority for her. Yeah. I, I also like your recommendation of uh, shorter. I think I actually recommended that to somebody who had almost a similar question in the past, I think. Yeah. So I do like that idea of doing like a sprint and then doing, I think the person was a longer run than this because three miles isn't very long. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a under, under 30 minute yeah. run for somebody. But yep. the idea of doing like a, fast one you know mile time see how fast you can get mm -hmm. that and then something in the middle and then her you know one day a week just challenge to see what her three mile look like you do that for a few weeks i bet you'll see an increase there was right a period of time where i trained it was a significant percentage of my clients that were either triathletes or mm -hmm. marathon runners because mm -hmm. once you like train Ironman, one yeah yeah and they start recommending and referring and uh the most success i had with some of these endurance athletes was when they never trained the distance that was their competition no joke mm -hmm. i trained a marathon runner and she never ran the marathon until the marathon came. Well, it's a I mean, lot, almost it's, never. It's say. like peaking for powerlifting. Yes. Yeah. Same concept. Yep. You rarely ever see a powerlifter max out on his way to a powerlifting yep. meet. You know, you want to save that for, for peak day, right? Yep. Yep. Our next caller is JR from Arizona. JR, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. You got it. A uh, little bit of background. I recently turned 40. I'm uh, five foot six, about 140 pounds around 10, 11% body fat. 
Um, I've been lifting pretty regularly since college, so 19, 20 years or so. Um, over the past couple of years, I've picked up uh, boxing. So that's been a lot of fun. I recently started MAPS Anabolic with the goal of putting on more muscle. Um, and I've continued to box two to three days a week, just on the off days. Um, I get quite a bit of a shoulder and bicep and quad pump during those boxing sessions, um, just from the high volume of punching and then body weight squats from bobbing and those types of things. Um, so my question is, could that be counted as one of my trigger sessions? Because I know you guys talk about just trying to get a pump and I do get that, or should I continue to do those as well? And then just as a, a follow-up, um, is there a program you'd recommend given those, those goals of boxing and um, putting on muscle? Yeah, let's, let's, do the, let's address the trigger session question first. It's yes and no. So what do I mean by that? It doesn't, it's not a replacement for trigger sessions. In other words, it doesn't do what a trigger session does. However, I don't think you should throw extra trigger sessions on top of it because right. it is more work, more damage, uh, requires more recovery. So you could do another trigger, maybe one trigger session on those days, but it's not really doing the same thing as a trigger session. But that's okay, right? Because you like boxing. You want to learn the technique, the skill of it. And you, there's many other benefits from boxing aside from, you know, whatever muscle building effect you may get from like a trigger that's session. Honestly, wouldn't you do, if you were to do any trigger session type work, I would actually do stuff to counter uh, the boxing, right? So I would do things like prone cobra. I would do some stuff like band pull band apart. Band stuff. Yeah. Band yeah. pull aparts, mobility stuff. More mobility yeah. type stuff, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, as far as programming is concerned, uh, man, MAPS performance is going gonna, is gonna to be great for what you're trying to do. Just because it's really focused on movement it's focused on multi-planar movement it's focused on rotation and all the stuff that's explosive power yeah. so i mean it's all that kind of stuff that like aids and bodes well with uh you know athletic performance so i mean in terms of combining the two that's that's really as close as we're going to get with our programs is i also want to know a little more about the goal though because you're in you're in good shape sounds like you you look like you're pretty fit you you're boxing you're lifting like uh do you want to, are you trying to change your body composition? Are you trying to build a shrink or you just want to be good at boxing, stay strong? I mean, what are, what are a little more specifics to the goal? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to build a little bit, maybe five to 10 pounds at the very most, but generally my, my ultimate goal is just have good energy, be healthy, right? I don't like, I'm not competing in any bodybuilding competitions or anything like that. I would like to get a little bit bigger, but that would be kind of a secondary goal of mine outside of just having more energy and being healthy at 10 to 11 percent body fat um with a good strength training program which maps performance is also phenomenal for that it's going to come from your diet yeah if you if you ate in a calorie surplus and pushed the the food intake you'll see the gains in muscle start to happen so that's where that's going to come from i, I would bump your calories five to six hundred um and you know keep your protein intake high and you should notice more strength and more muscle just from doing that because it sounds like you're working out right. You're doing everything kind of good. And because you're so lean, you know, you can go up a percent or two, not a big deal, but you'll get some good muscle and strength gains that, that come along with that. I'd also like to see the follow up to MAPS performance. I, I would like to see symmetry after that. I, I think that would be a good follow up program. Just the unilateral work that's in there, the isometrics that are in there since he's doing a sport. I think that will help bal keep him balanced. Um, so I would, I would add that in there too. Yeah. And then for, for mobility, if you're interested in more specifics around mobility, prime pro will have lots of different movements you could do to really work on connecting to different ranges of motion and improving your mobility. But I think the program that you should follow while doing this is mass performance. And you could, you could use the mobility sessions in there in com combination with your boxing. I, I think they're actually quite, uh, synergistic. Um, and really the way it's laid out, I think it's gonna be perfect for what you're trying to do. And back to what Sal was saying about the nutrition, if you're not seeing uh, gains and you're not building muscle, it's most likely just not enough calories because you're probably pretty active. I mean, if you're training that much and you're boxing, uh, it, I don't know how difficult it is for you to hit a calorie surplus or not, but if you do notice that you're not building muscle, it, it's most likely because <clears throat> you're just not able to get your calorie intake up high enough. Yeah, I've, I've put on about five pounds since starting uh, MAPS Anabolic, but nice. I, I do have to force feed myself a lot. I'm yeah. It's pretty difficult for me to gain weight given the activity and just high metabolism. So 
but I have put on some weight. Oh, well, that's actually really good. Five yeah. pounds. That's yeah, phenomenal. no, that's, it's, you're doing great, dude. Honestly, you really are. I, it, that's the hard part about doing like a sport like boxing or basketball or anything like that. That's high intensity is just it's hard to to build uh, while training and then and then doing that's just a lot of a lot of calorie burn, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Right. Well, thanks for calling in. We'll send you mass performance, JR. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You awesome. got it, man. Right. Yeah, that was pretty pretty black and white. I think pretty simple. Well, I yeah. think he was already in. I think he's just wanting to get confirmation that he's doing the right thing and yeah. he's okay. And then about the trigger sessions, I thought that was a, a fair question. Like if somebody is doing something already in addition to the weight training program, I'm not really going to add right. much in there unless it's corrective stuff, right? That's exactly. why I brought up the like the band pull aparts, prone cobra, maybe some hip mobility stuff. Like yeah, you still got to count it as work because right. obviously, you know, that's putting the stress on the body. But uh, yeah, to complement it would be the way to do it. And just once I think is a good recommendation as opposed to multiple times a day. Yeah, boxers do really well with shoulder mobility um, and rotational uh, movements where yeah. they're working on lumbar and, yep. and you know, all, all, just ro just rotation in general, but lots of shoulder mobility. Um, and it really improves their ability to do what they do in the ring when you focus on those things. And as far as building strength and muscle is concerned, you know, for anybody listening who's, uh, you know, a boxer and worried about the added muscle and strength and what that'll do to their boxing, so long as you practice the skill of boxing alongside the gaining muscle, then you'll be able to, you'll be okay. If you stop boxing and then gain a bunch of muscle, what will happen when you go back to boxing is you'll find yourself feeling awkward because mm -hmm. you have a new body. It just doesn't move like yeah. it used to before. So you have to do both at the same time if you want to have your skill match your new body size. So right. what do you guys like as far as the order then? Like performance, symmetry, and then would you circle him back to anabolic or performance or where would you move from there? Like, you so know, you I think, uh, I think that's a fair, that's a fair way to do it. Um, he could go yeah. strong. Yeah, even. I was going to say either anabolic or maybe strong. Yeah, yeah if you wanted to change strong. a pace. The only reason why, because I, I thought strong too, the only reason why I don't like strong with him boxing is the I would I would cut out the work sessions and that be just as boxing then. Right. Because that's a lot. The, the work, work sessions are intense. They are. They're, yeah. And so to do the work sessions on strong and then also boxing, that's I think true. is too much. That would actually be closer to a work session, you know, than, right. than a trigger session. So yeah. that would actually make sense. Yeah. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.